Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel or if you're new, thanks for clicking on my video. So today I have a special video. We're playing in multi-chrome, so you already know I am excited. I am finally showing you a swatch video, a three look video on the palette that I got from Lethal Cosmetics. This is a customized palette that I put together myself. I showed it in a YouTube shorts, I believe, and I also showed it on my Instagram, but I haven't played with it. So today I'm going to show you how to get this look right here. Absolutely gorgeous, as well as two others. Tell you why I picked the colors that I did, show you the color story swatches and all that good stuff. Before we get into the video, if you're new, I would love to have you join the family. So you know the drill, please hit that subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so you don't miss any of my uploads. And if you wanna see how I got this look and why you need to build your own palette with Lethal Cosmetics, stay tuned and keep on watching. So let me try and get my thoughts together because y'all know when I deal with eyeshadow, I get excited, but these are not regular eyeshadows. So we up here right now. Today, I'm talking about the brand Lethal Cosmetics. Now, I have seen them on YouTube and I hesitated on ordering because they are actually based in Germany and I haven't had a lot of experience with international shipping, but I said my goal this year was to get into more indie brands. I wanted the Nightflower palette, palette when it came out. I didn't get it. And then I saw Ask Whitney do a video showing that she built her own custom eyeshadow palette. If you've been watching my channel for a while, if you know anything about me, custom, limited edition, special order, <laughs> like I get sucked in to any of those things. So, I was like, hold on, I get to build my own palette and pick my own shades, where do I sign up? I'm gonna tell y'all how I picked the palette, how I picked the colors, what colors I picked. I'm gonna swatch everything. So this might be a long video, but I promise you it's worth it. And if you've been on the fence about trying this out, I think this video will help you make up your mind. I'm gonna tell you right now, it is a little pricey. I did have a coupon code, so that definitely helped out a lot, but the total cost for my order was $197.80. I had a discount code, so it ended up coming out to $163.19. I got everything that I wanted, so do I think it was worth it? Absolutely. Would I do it again? Show sure would, so that just answers it right now. When you go to their website, they have a palette designer, so you get to pick the type of palette that you want. Mine is a little dirty because she's been on my vanity, but this is the palette that I picked. There was another one that I wanted, but that one was out of stock. So I just went with this one. Cute. You can see it has a little design in the background. Um, this is their freestyle palette in Prismatic, but they have different ones. I actually wanted Flora and I was just going to get eyeshadows, but then I saw they had blushes and highlighters, so I got that too. That one by itself is $23, so you pay in $23 just for that. Do you have to get this? No, but I wanted the full experience of everything. So this is what the inside of my palette looks like. Isn't she gorgeous? I did pick some mattes because I wanted to be able to make a complete look with this palette, but you know, I had to go for mostly multi-chromes. I don't think I picked one regular shimmer shade because why would I do that? So I'm gonna try to find these names real quick and tell you the names of each because I want to do this justice. The first shadow in the palette here is called Parsec. This is a multi-chrome with a sparkly metallic finish that shifts from pink to gold to turquoise to lilac. Now, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see all of those shifts in here. I'm going to swatch them, but again, sometimes swatches do not do these justice. So this right here is Parsec. She is a bit flaky, which I did not know. And normally I don't love shades like that. You can see she's shifting though. Oh my God. 
I normally don't love shades like that, but I was like, you know what? We're trying something different. It's almost like it's one of those iridescent, it doesn't have the dark base. So it looks like it would almost be a shimmer shade that you can put on top of a matte to give it more of a multi-chrome finish if you wanted to do that. Or you could just put it straight on your eye, whatever you wanna do. So the next one in the palette is Allure. So this one is more of a, it's not as flaky, we'll say that, as the shade before. So we'll go ahead and swatch her here. So you can see that one's not as crumbly. And I love that these, like in the pan, this one doesn't look like much at all, but you can see the shifts in it. And again, this one also has that lighter base to it. So this one is a multi-chrome with a metallic finish that shifts from champagne to green to gold to red. I don't, let me put some more and see. I don't see red. I feel like I don't see red on this one at all. I don't know. I don't know about that, but I definitely see it shifting and that's all I care about. The next one in the palette is Nebula. Y'all know me in greens, so Nebula was definitely going to be on the list of shades to pick and I feel like you can't see this until I swatch it. Nebula is a multi-chrome with a metallic finish that shifts from navy blue to teal to emerald green to lime green. So that is it there on my finger and you can see. Let's go ahead and put her here. Oh, I just love how that looks. The next shade I picked is Retrograde. Retrograde is a multi-chrome with a metallic finish that shifts from tan to turquoise to blue to violet to red. Hmm. These a lot say red and I don't know that. Oh, I guess I see pink more than red, but you see a lot of the green first. So. I don't see red. Oh, what's that color right there up here at the top? I don't know what that is, <laughs> but either way, super shifty. I'm gonna build that one up a little bit more. This one is really smooth. Oh, I do kind of see the red. I hope it's translating on camera, but I see it. So, okay, I will give them that one. The next shade I picked is Exosphere. This is a multi-chrome with a metallic finish that shifts from deep blue to teal to purple to orange to olive green. So that looks blue straight off the bat. And you can't really see, I wish these never really do what I want them to do when I'm trying to show them on camera. But I see blue and purple initially. Oh God, I had to have this shade. I just absolutely had to. You see blue and purple mostly. This one's a thicker. She is thick and I absolutely love it. I see some purple. I see some red. I don't know about this green. Y'all see green in there? Olive green? I don't know. Maybe you see it once it's on the eye. But I also picked my shades by looking at what the different shifts were so that when I paired them together, I felt like they could go well together because of how they're supposed to shift. Now, whether or not they actually do that is another story, but that was the goal. I already know the name of this next one is called Dark Matter. Dark Matter is, I think one of their newer ones, it's a multi-chrome with a metallic finish that shifts from black to purple to red to orange to teal. I see the teal, it looks very dark, but it's weird because when I look at it and it's not showing, I see the black. I see a lot more red when I look at it in person and I don't feel like it's showing that on camera. So, oh, you can kind of see it there. It's just, I love, that's exactly why I love these. So let me go ahead and swatch, huh? I see green, come on camera. I see black, 
I see green, I see a little red. It is dark though. It is definitely dark and it's weird because in the pan it shows a lot more red than it does whenever I'm looking at it on camera. The next shade we have is called Magnitude. She is also a multi-chrome with a metallic finish that shifts from red to pink to gold to lime green to emerald green. That's a lot. That is a lot. I see some green right there though. So let's see. There she is on my finger. You can see the green around the edge. I also love shades like this. I see a little purple in there. <sighs> yeah, she's a shifty one. Love her. Definitely love that one. And that is actually it for the multi-chromes. I could have went <laughs> for a lot more. But like I said, I wanted to make sure that I got some mattes because I wanted to see what the formula was like. Also because I wanted to use this palette to be able to do a complete look and not have to go into any other shades to do it, any other palettes to do it. So those are the multi-chromes that I picked right there absolutely gorgeous shades they all are very shifty which is exactly what i wanted so i felt like this was a good start and enough variation in color for me to get a good feel for what these shadows and this brand has for us so now let's move to the mattes so of course i had to get a green i picked the shade eden this is a matte and it is described as an ivy green i'm gonna swatch these on the other side here just do this so that is what it looks like right there these are very very smooth that is crumbly a little tiny bit but color is what it says it should be so definitely think that one is cute and it'll pair well with a lot of the shades that shift to the different greens next shade I picked up is insomnia this one is described as a deep smoky blue with a matte finish. Again, I was trying to think, okay, you have all these multi-chromes that have this blue and this purple, and I think that this shade will be really pretty with that. Look at the color. So yes, we definitely needed a blue. I um, also felt like I needed to get a pink, so I picked Terminus. Terminus is the name of this one. This one is described as a raspberry with a matte finish. I would say that is also pretty accurate. So we'll go ahead and swatch her right there. Gorgeous shade. And again, I decided to get this one because if I wanted to do something a little lighter with the shades that don't have a dark base, this would be cute and I could tap something over it or use this as a slightly deepening shade, but still a light, more like a spring look, I'm thinking. The next matte is the shade Unity, which is described as a deep grape with a matte finish. So a purple versus going specifically for a pink. So these are all very different. And I just feel like this purple would have been great to help add some depth to any of the multi-chromes or to blend with the others that I have. So super, super pretty. And then of course I needed to get a black and their black is called Transmutation. And it just says it's a pitch black with a matte finish. This is her right there. And she is black. She is definitely black. And I swatched them all twice, so that is the payoff with those. So these are the shades right here. So you can see that the mattes definitely complement the shades that I picked and that was on purpose. So I think I did a good job with that. So now for the face shades, I'm not gonna lie. I don't think I picked these that well because I'm so used to stuff not showing the colors that they're supposed to. They're always lighter, I think. So. I wasn't sure the depth based on the pictures versus what I was going to get in real life. I could tell you right now, they got me. This 
first shade, I'm going to go ahead and show you the highlighter shade that I got. This is in the shade Isotope. This one is a champagne with light gold highlights. These feel very smooth. I'm going to go ahead and, since we only have four. But I feel like that is like the perfect highlight shade for me. And I don't feel like it's weird because I feel like I don't know if it's just because I have makeup remover on my finger like I feel like this is not sticking like it's it feels very smooth but I feel like it's sticking to my finger it doesn't stick like that and it looks super like there's no glitter it's not chunky it's just a gorgeous highlighter so the next shade I picked a bronzer shade and again I thought that these were going to be even though they have pictures on models and based on the picture on the model I should not have picked this shade she's dark I picked the shade Zenith. So this is a brown bronzer with cool undertones. At first I was like, oh, that's not gonna be bad. Hold on, let me show y'all because this is a very pigmented shade. So I can use it. I just have to use it with a very light hand because that builds up very quickly and can get super, super dark fast. I picked two blushes and there was also a method to the madness for these because I picked this shade thinking I could use it in my crease so that made me not have to buy a brown. I was thinking and then this blush shade I picked Coraline for the same reason. I wanted something a little more red but also could be used as a crease shade. So this is a wine red blush. This one actually feels not as smooth as the bronzer but still it looks like a wine red absolutely gorgeous again very pigmented so i had to be careful and then the last shade i wanted to pick something different i could have gotten just a standard y'all know how i like my terracotta warm mauve shades but i was like no barbara pick something else i decided to go with this shade called adorned and I like this one because it has a little bit of a sheen to it and it also looks like a red, which I don't have many red blushes, if any. This is a shimmery cherry red blush with a raspberry pearl. So hopefully you can see there, yeah, the raspberry pearl that's in it. So a very gorgeous, very different shade. And I'm going to go ahead and swatch it. But when I swatch it, it just looks like the red, except it has a little bit of a sheen. Look at how red that is. Like, I really was like, I could also use this as an eyeshadow too. So that is the method to my madness for why I picked the shades. I think they are absolutely gorgeous. Now you see the full picture together. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Now you see the full picture together. So to me, that looks like a complete palette. All right, and because I can't remember the shade names off the top of my head, I'm gonna point and show you guys what I'm using. So I'm gonna start with just a fluffy crease brush. We're gonna go with the bronzer and I'm gonna go light-handed. This is Zenith, I do remember that. And we're just gonna start, like I barely dipped in there and just put this in my crease. This is probably gonna be the base for most of my shades unless I'm doing something more pink. I probably should have gotten a lighter shade just for it to be a crease shade, but light hand, blend it out. I would throw this in my crease and go in a heartbeat. So it's just, I have to apply the same way when I'm putting this on my face. I'm gonna take the pink. So I'm gonna get a smaller crease brush. I have some, all kind of brushes up here. I don't know what they are. This one is by Colored Rain. This is their small blending brush. And I'm going to go into this pink shade down here. And it's a little powdery, but okay. Definitely see some good color payoff. It is not just blending away, so we like that. Let's try a little bit of a halo eye with this one, since this color is really showing up well. Keep building around the edge to blend into that crease shade and kind of smoke it out a little bit, but really pack it here more on the inside. Then to go a little bit darker, I'm going to use the same brush and go in with this purple shade. And 
just lightly blend that in. I feel like these are definitely blending well together. I'm not having any issues with any patchiness or anything skipping or anything like that. And you can differentiate between the shades well enough to know these are two different shades. They aren't blending together and just disappearing. So definitely love that. Loving how this is looking so far. And then we're going to take... Which one do we want to do? Let's go with this shade here. Oh yeah. I'm still gonna do it with my finger because I always feel like shimmer shades just look better like that, but off the bat, yes. Much more payoff using my finger. And I think that combo together with the pink and the purple is perfect. It's almost like they just take on whatever shade they're paired with. Just gonna go around the edge. Cause you notice like, I feel like this looks a little darker, but it's kind of just blending in with the other shades. So I'm gonna go back in with the darker purple. Actually, let's see what this blush does. Or do I wanna go darker? I wanna go a little tiny. Do I wanna go a little darker? <laughs> Ugh, let's try the blush. We're gonna go in with Coraline. Let's see if that adds anything. Right now I'm just playing, cause I don't know what I'm doing. I don't think that adds a lot as far as depth. So that's pretty much just adding another color. I'm just going back into the purple and darkening that up just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. That is so pretty. And I'm getting some fallout now, of course. I'm gonna go back around very lightly with the contour shade just around the edge to blend. We're going to do a little bit on the bottom lash line. I'm just going to line that with the purple because again, we don't want this one to be too dark. We will get deeper on these next couple looks, but I want to try to show as much depth that this palette has as possible. And then I'm going in with the multi-chrome shade on the inner I don't want to pick up with this brush. I probably need to spray it. I'm just trying not to change it too much. We're going to move on to the other eye. Let me start off with my crease shade. We already know what that is. Going back into the bronzer. I think I'm going to try to keep this diffused and then build it up in the crease. Since I don't have a dark brown. And then we're gonna start off with Dark Matter. That almost just looks black. Which we may end up adding some black to this one. Y'all see that? I don't know what color that is coming off yet. I don't see any red with that at all. It just looks black. That one there, it just looks black. But you see a little bit of it in the pan I'm going to do this shade here with it since there's supposed to be some red in that one and there is some green in this one too. Let's try that and see how it goes. I'm going to use the other side of my flat brush and see if I can get it to pick up. Oh, put your powder, girl. See, I feel like those blend well together because of the shifts that they both have. But this one, you don't see any red. It just looks like the red that I thought I was gonna see in Dark Matter 
it's kind of coming through on this one, but then it shifts to green and gets dark. So I think those go well together. Let's just go ahead and pull her all the way to the inner. And then we're gonna pull a little more of this on top just to blend them together. That is a gorgeous shade. I'm gonna go, see now this, I feel like I could kind of go with the pink. I could go with the purple. Maybe even, let's try a little bit of the green. Woo, whoa, oh, that picked up a lot. Slow your roll, I just wanted a little. Telling y'all some of these shades. I'm gonna see if I can build this dark matter shade up any, just to kind of give this a little more depth. I mean, it's dark. This looks like a very gorgeous smoky shade, smoky eye. Tell me what y'all think. I definitely feel like these look different enough that I can say for sure, yes, these are two different looks. I just, honestly, I think I'm a little, dark matter shade is not what I expected. I really hope to see more of that red and I don't see it. Get my inner corner brush. We're gonna take this shade. There's some green, I see some reflect. And just put a tiny, tiny little bit. All right, so those are the two looks. Dark Matter, <laughs> this shade, was it this one? Yeah. So we got Dark Matter and this shade on this eye. And then we have this, this, and this on this eye. So I'm gonna finish the look, cause I do wanna take pictures. So I'm gonna wipe away my bake, do my liner, put some lashes on, show you the final look, and then we will do one more look and finish the rest of my face and then I will give you my final thoughts. You know what, I lied because I want my pictures to look good. I wanna do the rest of my face now. So let's get into this bronzer and this blush where they're supposed to go on my cheeks instead of where I've been putting them on my eyes. So, okay, I'm gonna take a big fluffy brush, a big, big, big fluffy brush. And we are gonna try to dip very, very, very lightly. <laughs> oh, okay. So far we're safe. I'm literally just... Because this color is not to play with and she will get very dark very fast. It's like that initial placement, you're like, oh crap. And then after that, it's like, whew, okay, we're good. That's enough. That is definitely enough. And then you always have the option, if you think it comes out a little bit too dark, you know, you can kind of blend your concealer and foundation kind of up into it just to diffuse it a little better. There's nothing on this brush, but I'm good with that. So now for the blush, we're gonna do the Coralina. I think it's Coralina, whatever this one is. We're gonna go for it very lightly. Mm -mm. See, I barely dipped. This is how you make somebody look like a clown. I'm gonna start back here and just lightly stamp. Okay, we're safe. But even still, that color does not play. Y'all know I love my blush to show, so I ain't got no issues with how this is coming out. Y'all look at my eyes though. <laughs> yeah, I know. Extra, extra, extra. Read all about it want a little more you know what I'm gonna take the red blush and I'm gonna just lightly try to blend those I feel like my cheeks are gonna look super clownish I look like 
Okay, stop with the blush. Stop with the blush. We're going to have to blend <laughs> We're going to have to blend that out some. But for right now, y'all, I'm telling you, I should have went with some lighter shades. I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I just really thought, oh, these are going to look light on the website, but they're not going to look dark enough on me. They look dark enough on me. Absolutely. So let's go in with our highlighter. Yeah. Now this shade, I feel like I can apply like a normal shade that I'm used to working with. I mean, she's still blinding. She is building up, but it's not crazy. So definitely, this shade looks a lot more icy in the pan. So when I saw it, I was like, oh, crap. That ain't going to work either. But putting it on my face, I think it is perfect. So now the face is done. Look at those eyes. Face is done. I just have mascara on since I'm doing another look. But this is what we have so far. So first look, second look. Absolutely love how these came out. I hope you can see these shifts because I can and they're gorgeous. So I'm going to take these off and do one more look. All right. I had to take a break and eat because <laughs> I was about to get hangry and shaky and I don't want to finish this video on a bad note. So let me just tell y'all something real quick. I decided to go ahead and try this Colored Rain Paint Base Eyeshadow Primer. Woo child, this is in the shade Rope. I put two little dots and it looks like it's creasing. Um, And she dried down fast. This reminds me of the... Think Barbara, think Barbara. I can't think and look for stuff at the same time. What is that? Um, The Anastasia Beverly Hills how white their primer is and how just like yeah that's what this reminds me of so if you have it here you go finish we're gonna finish with a green blue because i want it to be very different so we're gonna do this one i really want to do this one but i feel like my heather austin palette just kind of did that and i want something completely different i want to go in the green so and that blue so that's what we're gonna do I'm gonna start off again with my crease shade very light with the bronzer especially now since this is so stark and I'm mainly concentrating on blending that up a little bit also to help take away some of this white now we're gonna go in first with the green this thing has a lot that comes off and we're going to start with that and blend that out a little bit and then go to the blue and then go to our multi-chrome shade. And I'm going to really, really do my best to try to make this pop because I want this to be glorious. So I'm just going to keep building this up and blending outwards. All right, so I'm going to use the same brush, just wiping it off a little bit. And now I'm going to go in with that blue. So this shade here. Right off the bat, I mean, you can see, I hope you can see that those colors look different. But I do kind of feel like they're blending into each other a little tiny bit which may be a good thing because, hey, we want them to blend, but I don't want this color to disappear. Okay. Now we're going in with our multi-chrome and I definitely want to use a brush to start. So we're gonna take this shade here. Be still my heart, yes indeed. And I'm not even wetting this. That is literally the perfect combo. But of course, I want to use my finger because I want to see if I can get it to be even more. Honestly, that picked up pretty well with the brush. I don't see that that much of a difference. You know what? We're going to go in with the blue purple too. Just because I'm going to take the other side of my brush. Yep. Perfect, that did it. 
I hope you can see. I will forever live and love a shade like this. Both of these shades actually are like my favorite multi-chromes. Ooh, I wonder when I dry my brush. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Just because I want to go a little bit darker, we're going to go ahead and see what this black does. A little bit of that black and just deepen up here. I don't know, those other colors are holding their own. I don't see this really, it's darkening it a little bit, but definitely have some fallout, but that's okay. We put our powder, I'm gonna wash it off, wipe it off, go back with my blending brush. I don't know if I wanna add some more color or just blend. Yeah, we don't need to add no more color right now. Brush off my powder get this bottom lash line done maybe put some more highlighter back <laughs> and we will be done bottom lash line i'm gonna go in with the blue start with that and see i don't think a day goes by that i don't get this in my eyeball when i do my bottom lash line with powder and then put a little bit of the green. And then inner corner. How about we just go with some highlighter? Yes, yes, all the yes. I am going to put on some lashes, finish my bottom lash line, and we will be done. But look at this shadow. Yes! All right, my lashes even decided to cooperate. So you know I am excited. This is the final look. I feel like these lashes are really big. I hope they're not taken away from it, but we are glam. We are glam glam. And all I'm doing is going <laughs> to work out. I don't have anything else planned today. I absolutely love how this turned out. Y'all saw the shadows in action. If you are thinking about doing this, it is so worth it. It is expensive, but you're literally getting everything you want. How many palettes can you say that about? There's always a few shades in it that you're not going to like, feel like you're not going to use. That is not the case with this one. I used pretty much, I think all of them except for the really glittery one. And I could have put that one not on the inside. No, stop it. See, stop it. Get your palette, build your palette, get your palette. Lethal Cosmetics is amazing and well worth it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Comment below, let me know which one you enjoyed the most and let me know if you're thinking about trying it for yourself. If you're new, I hope you decided to join the family by hitting that subscribe button and I will see you in my next video. Bye.